about how the Hall of Fame class? Oh yeah, dude. I yes. I, I I kid you not. It. I cried like a little girl. Yeah, I cried. I because re- man. So so if you guys don't know, the Undertaker was was, was inducted yeah. to the Hall of Fame. Finally, for real. Do a cheers to that. Cheers yeah, to the Undertaker. Yeah, cheers to the Undertaker. Cheers to the Undertaker. Oh my God. That was that that guy right there was my was my favorite wrestler mm-hmm. as a kid, and uh, and it could have have been in a better place in Texas where yeah. he started out. When you started, started out. out. Exactly. Oh, you know what I liked about Stone Cold? I liked the promo before Mania where it's like, so you're telling me you're gonna give me the chance to end my career where I started it? Yeah. In Dallas. Texas. Yeah. Dude, and, well, um. Like when I seen on SmackDown, my little cousin he went to SmackDown to, for the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and uh, he had the he had the videos of whenever they're chanting "You deserve it," and I'm I'm seeing there and I'm I'm watching the snap. I'm like, damn, I really wanted to go, Fuck. because like I, like like I said in 32, I wanted to go so I could see the Undertaker. The Undertaker was my is my like the, my absolute favorite. favorite wrestler, and he was so dedicated to his role. Yeah, he was so mm. dedicated, and then like. Whenever he, whenever I heard that they were introducing the Hall of Fame class, I was just waiting, waiting for Nerd Taker to come out. And mm. as soon as you hear the, doom, dude, I was shedding tears. I had goosebumps. Yeah. I was like, dude, it legit gives you goosebumps. Yeah. And then like the music is so loud, the the the, the what's it called, the bongs, is, yeah, it's crazy. And then like when he, as soon as he, dude, he's big. I seen that in person. That dude is huge. Huge. Like he walks out, he makes everybody else look tiny. He's like, he's about, to, he's like, dude. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna lie. He's about as tall as like the bottom point of that jumbotron. He's like he almost reaches. If he would go like that, you'd probably touch it. He's yeah. that big. And then like whenever he came out, I'm like, hey, you know. I told myself like I didn't get to see him wrestle, but I damn sure I got to see him in the Hall of Fame. Hell that yeah. That kind of killed me. I'm like, oh man. I literally, the, 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 I, I literally cried. And then the speech night before the night before the SmackDown during SmackDown after SmackDown. Wow. It was. You had to take a respect, bro. Like every, career. And nobody and everybody respected him so much that they, they nobody said no one more match. Nobody said that. Yeah, no one said yeah. that. They're just like saying you deserve it. Yeah, which he because he does. does he dude. does. He does. Even after like the streak was over, he was still coming back every year. Yeah, still training his body for one match. Yeah, like and how then, many like, times can you do one not, more match? And it's you not know? that easy with the height he is. It's mm-hmm. pretty tall. And then if you guys if you guys haven't seen the last ride, you can see how much a toll it takes mm-hmm. because he like fighting with yourself every year, saying okay, this is it, and then this is it, and then this is it. But he's so in tune with with the with WWE that yeah. he's like he just can't give up. Yeah. And then they, I heard that the he's six ten. By the way, holy shit! When he's other huge, like bro. companies wrestling, um, what is it called wrestling companies hit him up. Like, they didn't even bother hitting him up because they knew he was so dedicated to oh, WWE. Oh, bookers. Like, any booker or anything like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn. But, uh, yeah, man. Like, much respect to that man, bro. Much respect to that man. Which was your favorite versions of The Undertaker? He's gone through many character changes. The first one. The first one. The was very pretty, first yeah. one? The mine, ver- mine was probably The All-American Badass. The All-American one. Badass was dope. That was pretty cool. It's Especially different. when he had the Limp Bizkit theme, yeah. uh, the Limp Bizkit theme song and right in the... With the whenever they had whenever he was teamed up with Kane, whenever he was an All American Badass, that was like my favorite. That was my favorite Undertaker. Mm. And then he went from All American Badass to Dead Man, and the way he did that was he did a Buried Alive match at Survivor Series, oh, yeah. which was the first pay per view he debuted at, mm-hmm. and it was uh, fourteen, fifteen years in. So this was like o two, o three. I don't remember, but yeah. he did a Buried Alive match and he lost. But then he came back at Mania as the Dead Man, Dead man yeah. to uh, face Kane. It was uh, WrestleMania 20. Oh yeah, that's yeah. fucking crazy, man. Bro, much respect bro. to the much Undertaker. respect to that man, bro. Good best of best of luck to everything he's gonna do in the future. Yeah, and man, he's have y'all seen his interviews and different things, man? He's an interesting guy. He really is. That, like that, especially when he tells the story about how he started and everything. And wow, that, and wow, that's, and that's, that's the crazy. Beauty, that's the beauty of, of of that shows you how much of a of dedication he threw into the role mm-hmm. because. Back then, like whenever he was actually like in his prime, he never did any under- interviews. interviews or anything because they would held kayfabe yeah. character. He and, stayed in it. He was then, deep. Yeah, he and then now, and then now that he was towards the end of his career, he kind of knew already. And that's what was beautiful is that you actually yeah. got to meet Mark. Yeah, not the Undertaker. You met Mark, and that's another cool. thing too. It's you're finally meeting the care the person, not yeah. the character, and 
the person will obviously be different than the character. He said during his, uh, when he had that run with the American Badass, he had a bit more liberty yeah. to be himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, there was a, there was a uh, what's it called? A, he did a podcast with Stone Cold. Yeah. And there was a bit that he did where he said that he out drank uh, some kind of rock band. It was him, Soul Taker, and uh, I think I want to say it was Limbiscuit, but it was an old school rock band. Yeah. And they all challenged him and said, hey, I bet you we can out drink you. And, he, and Undertaker's like, nah, bro. You ain't nah. Especially that. how tall he is, the yeah. way he is. He's like, mm. he's like, nah, no chance. So they went back to his room, to uh, the rock band's room. Yeah. And they went partying like all night. And legit, Undertaker was literally the last man standing. <laughs> he took Soul Taker on his shoulder. And he said, all right, everybody was laid out on the floor. People <laughs> were thrown up in the restroom, passed out. I'm not, I don't know what band it was. I think I would say it's Limp Bizkit, but I'm just reaching on that one, but. Yeah, he took Soul Taker and said, "All right, our job, our job is done here." And he just walked out, bro. That's what tripped me. That's what made me have more respect. I'm like, man, that's what made me even cry even more. I was like, fuck, he's done, man. He's done. He's done, man. Yeah. It's so God, that's the once in a generation character right there. I don't, like... I don't think anybody else is gonna be top off, but he did. no, there will never be another Undertaker. Yeah. There will not. There won't. Won't uh-huh. simply, but the. <laughs>